Now, I'm going to show you a little variation on the prime rib roast, uh, which is, is basically it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be a rib roast, but uh, some people like it when you tie the bones back on. Uh, and, and so we're going to take the meat off the bone, and then we're going to tie the bone back on. Um, the point of that is just to make it easier for carving. Uh, it allows you, once you take it out of the oven, obviously very hot, it can be a little bit hard to handle, and sometimes peeling the meat off the bone when taking it out of the oven can be a little little bit tricky, a little bit difficult. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut off another, another two rib roasts from here, I'm going to do it the same way I did before. Just make sure I'm through that bone pretty clear and just boom, right through it. Get a nice grip with your non-knife hand, right? You got a nice grip right here. Go right through the meat with that nice big knife. So there we go. Now, I showed you in the previous cut here about taking out the membrane. I'm going to do that real quick just because... It works and it's good and I want to kind of reinforce this because uh, this is something I'd like to see when I get a nice piece of meat in a store is a nice clean piece that's easy to eat. So here we go. All right, now we've pulled this out. Got a little bit more to go here. There we go. Excellent. I'm going to clean this out a bit. All right. It's hanging on for dear life. Here we go. Okay, so now, as I said previously, if you want, you can go ahead, trim down this fat like this, you know, clean it up any other way you want. You know, that's up to you. You've got some of this, uh, you know, this this, uh, this sinewy stuff right on the front. Going to go ahead and trim that out, right? And this is from the middle, so you've got a little more of that fat in here. Start to taper down here. You got a little more on the back because these ribs are getting shorter. This is ribs uh, 6 through 12 on the animal. I should have showed you that when Miss Violet was out here. Uh, but ribs 6 through 12 on the animal are uh, where this prime rib, that whole prime rib comes from. And that is a, a basically a standard prime rib uh, piece, the whole piece like it was a little while ago. That's uh, It's seven ribs long. So just a little little extra information for you there. So, if you want to take the rib, right, and cut it off the bone, and we're going to tie the bone back on, I'll show you a couple of ways to do that. A but, you know, you can always ask your butcher to do this for you, but what you're going to do if you're doing this at home, just above, here's the bones right here. I think you can see those in there. You're going to take your knife, and you're going to go right on top of those bones. Now, you know, obviously we're trying to keep as much meat, you know, intact up here. So we're really just riding that knife right down along the bones. Great to do with a little, little boning knife. You know, get a nice cut in there. You see that? And from the side maybe it will help you a little bit. And you're going to keep that, keep a little pressure on the knife down against the bone. So that blade is sitting right on that bone. And you're just going to make small movements, small cuts keeping the, the blade flat against the bone, but also nice downward pressure as you cut through the meat. And again, keep that knife nice and sharp. And you're just riding it along that bone. See? See how the meat's coming off right there? Right? And you're getting down towards the end. You can see it. You can see the knife as it works down right into there. Now, I'm stopping there for a reason. I was talking to my friend Steve the Butcher at Cranberry Market, and he said... He's been leaving it just like that before he ties the bones back on. And, it, you know, we were talking, and the reason is it does create a little bit more stability. After all, we do call this a standing rib roast, right, when we cook it. Uh, it it'll give it a little more stability when we, when we stand it up. And, uh, you, you know, it also does the dual task of getting this nice and loose so that when you go to carve it at home, after you take it out of the oven, you don't have to contend so much with these bones. So you can do that, or you can just cut that clean through and tie it back on this way. So I'll show you, uh, I'll show you that method, right? So in in principle, really, if you stop short like this, you know, you're just folding it back on, and we're going to tie it. We could tie it this way. We tie it this way. It doesn't really matter which way you tie it, but I'll show you both of those as well. So for now. And it creates a little stability also 
if you if you don't cut quite all the way through, it creates a little more stability uh, for us as well when you go to tie it. Because this basically you're just going to go right in there, and then you're going to sit the roast right back on the bones. Right, this side's a little uh, actually a little bit better, a little fattier. You got that, boom. So we're going to take our twine, good butcher's twine. Now there's a couple ways, like I said, a couple ways to do it. I I say most often when you see it. Right, you got the bones off here. You'll see it go underneath the meat just like that and tie it kind of like right around the bone, right? And if you tie it this way, which I'll call uh I'll call this lengthwise just for uh for the sake of uh how we're looking at this here. Can you see that? And you got the string coming right off there. It's around this this first bone, and then if we do it here. There we go. Right there, boom, around the second bone. So now, when you take this home and put it in the oven and go to carve it, you know, this will cook just like this. Cooks with the twine on it. See the see the twine right there? Good, right? It looks, looks almost like the whole piece, right? And there it is here, right around these bones. Uh, and when you go to carve it, you know what you would do is uh, be sitting like this. You'd want to probably just pick it up right here, snap it right off. If you want, you got a good uh, good knife or a good fork on you there. Take it right off the bones, boom, and then you can start slicing just like that. Um, all right, so there's that. Now the other way to tie it, I mentioned I'd show you another way. Uh, it, like I said, it really doesn't matter which way you tie it. Uh, it you know, it depends on, <laughs> I guess, how much twine you have and what your preference is. Uh, the other way you can do it is to just go, we'll go crossbone. We said lengthwise the first time. This is across the bone. Same method. We're just going in a different direction. So there you go. Like that. Now what I would do as well if we go a, a, across the bone like we did here is next, because obviously you still have the space here, I would go just lengthwise again to make sure that that sits nice and solid. This is probably going to create a little bit more stability in your roast. It's a nice tight package <laughs> if you uh, if you kind of move it around like that. Uh, you know, this has a nice stability because you got one across and one going lengthwise. Doesn't matter, but this is this is a pretty good method because as soon as this comes out of the oven, you're going to end up cutting it again. Uh, and and uh, just you know going from there and, and carving up your roast and slicing it however you see fit. So that is uh, number two. That is a prime rib with the bones taken off and tied back on. Mm -hmm.